Episode three, the Ita, the greatest adventurers to the end of the earth. jungle of Luzon Island is the Magut River mountain valley where the people who settled Southeast Asia ended their 100,000 year adventure eastward out of Eden. According to mitochondrial DNA studies, modern humans ancestral home is the lush Okavaganda Delta in northeastern Botswana. The Khoisan hunter-gatherer inhabiting the land today contain Eve's deep rooting lineage of L0. Over a hundred thousand years ago, a small group of Homo sapiens left the delta heading north towards the Horn of Africa. Around 70,000 years ago, man's greatest adventure out of its birth continent began by crossing the Red Sea. These descendants of the Ancient of Days crossed the prehistoric southern coastline of Asia now submerged under hundreds of feet of water. The dense, cold ocean waters caused sea levels to drop hundreds of feet. The northern ice world and Neanderthals blocked our ancestors' expansion to the north. And south was only water. The only reasonable direction? East. Generation upon generation, their lives were filled with hunting giant sloths, wombats, and other megafauna. Modern humans were Earth's apex predator who battled and mated with archaic humans who had exited Africa hundreds of thousands of years before, occupying every part of the eastward journey. They crossed major waterways and mountains to a now submerged lost continent, Sunderland. Crossing Sunderland's great jungle, they reached man's prehistoric greatest ocean crossing from Palawan to Luzon. In my previous video, I explained how archaic human islanders made this crossing, but now it's modern man's turn. The Ita crossed over about 20,000 years ago. Once arriving, they did not stop adventuring. Traveling north up Luzon Island, these great explorers arrived at the edge of the world. The east coast of the Philippines plunges into the depths of the earth. No human would cross the great ocean to the Pacific Islands for tens of thousands of years. And guess what? It was the Cagayanese that did it first. Man, these people are amazing. Now that you know the origin story of the Ita people, let's dive into their incredible history. The Spanish referred to them as Negroes and thought they were Africans. Technically, we are all Africans, but the Ita are a more pure bloodline of our ancient ancestors. They have dark skin tone, short stature, curl afro textured hair, and a naturally lighter hair. They have blondism. They have lost most of their native tongue and now speak Austronesian languages and contain Austronesian DNA. They were hunter-gatherers like the other Igorots. The Ita do contain a lot of Denisovan gene flow, meaning their ancestors, like ours, had sexual relationship with other archaic humans. Like my ancestry, we contain a ton, a ton of Neanderthal DNA within my bloodline. My bloodline is mostly Europe. I also have about 2% African. The Ita were never conquered by the Spanish. Many attempts were made to bring them into the culture, but they preferred their hunter-gatherer free lifestyle. The Spanish knew the Ita were fearsome warriors. They had incredible speed with a bow and arrow. Unfortunately, in the past, the Ita were subject to slavery and were sent off to China and Borneo as slaves, mainly sold by the lowlanders around the coastline. The Ita had many different lifestyles. One group, which now appears to no longer exist, used to live up in tree houses. One of the most interesting things about taking the Ita is comparing them with the Khoisan because when we do this, we can learn a lot about our ancient ancestors and a lot about their techniques and lifestyle and how they lived and what didn't change. 
is a lot of things didn't change. One of the things that I'm fascinated with is understanding ancient religion. And so what are some of the similarities between the Ita and the Khoisan today? They both believe in a supreme being, but they also have lower gods. The gods control elements of the environment. They worship through rituals and sacrifices. There are evil gods that cause misfortune. They both believe that your behavior determines whether the gods are going to help you or not help you. That both are very superstitious. They both use forms of dances as prayer. Both groups had creation myths. They had men or women who they believed had superior power to speak to the spirits or gods. And both groups had ancestral spirits who did good and bad things. And that kind of gives you an idea of if you were to get in a time machine and go back 70,000 years and meet this group, what they would believe in and how they would behave. But the best question that Ita bring to me is a question of why. Why did the Khoisan and the Ita people never really progress in technology? They continued to use the same practices from 70,000 years ago until today. Why? Why did other people progress, but the Ita and the Khoisan have not? It's not necessarily due to intellect, or IQ has to do with other factors and understanding those other factors which led to the progression of the Austronesian people and Europeans and other groups of people and how they became technology superior will help us understand how we can progress societies.